Hey guys, insight number four. So we're in Mosiah 14 through 16, and this is really talking about what we were alluding to in the last one around, um, and this is sort of a theme, a uh, central theme about what Abinadi is talking about here, standing for Jesus, understanding his word, keeping that um, wonder and amazement in the gospel, and having that word written on our hearts. Now again, we can go back to those phylacteries where they had you know, scriptures tied to their head, and they wore them around their wrist. In our modern day religion, and even then, he's encouraging them, write these things on your heart. Um, there's a lot of uh, scriptures that talk about writing Jesus' name on your heart, like like not literally getting a scalpel and carving it into the flesh over your heart or anything. But what, what, where are you keeping this? Is it all up here, or is it spirit felt? You know. So these chapters, this is where he actually gives the answer to Isaiah 53. So compare that, and again, I will redirect you to different versions of the Bible, which our prophets and first presidency use as well the, um, the message is a good one for this it just speaks it so beautifully in more of a poetic way that we could understand it and gives us a context that we wouldn't get from this uh, let's also go back go back to the actual bible of isaiah 53 have a read of that because this is um ben and i quoting him so it's not word for word verbatim but it's pretty close but there's a little more deep here and you'll see the the context of it across the the timelines and the different peoples and how Abinadi feels about it so that's good as well um, but these introduce you to Jesus um, a king that is vastly different in all the right ways all the best ways so right now they've got King Noah who's really just not a good dude and doesn't make good decisions doesn't surround himself with good people <coughs> all the things and Jesus is going to come, and he's going to be the best king you will ever know, who has just all the good things in all the best ways. And that's what Abinadi is talking to them about. So again, I'm not going to talk a lot about these chapters, but I would really invite you to especially this week read 14 through 16, because this is knowing Christ. This is who he's going to be. We know him as he was and as he is now. For these people, it was who he's, who he is um, now, but also who he's going to be. And we know a whole lot more about him than they did. So again, we're in that unique position where we know that Christ, we know the Christ that's going to come, but we know a whole lot more about the Christ that is. Um, so, talks are talks about in like in verse two how he's going to grow up as a, a tender plant and a root out of dry ground. Um, again, talking about that, you know, he's going to grow up as a, a regular child in a no back, no way out back, po donkey little place, um, which he did, and that he's wounded for our transgressions, that he's going to be falsely judged, and uh, all these things. And it talks about that. It's just, ugh. And then in 15, it goes on to talk about how he's going to make an intercession and be the transgressions of the people. So he's talking about the redeeming part of his journey. Um, and just beautiful and if you're going to look at, at King Noah and what he did and what he didn't do you can list a whole lot of things here that Jesus did but the one thing he did not do was give up or back down or flinch he faced it all and it would have been horrible I, I, I would like to think I would not flinch as well but I know that I probably hesitated um Maybe I'd flinch. I don't know. But that's not my journey. My journey is different. And in my journey, I, I don't want to flinch. I'm bold and brave and loud. And people don't like it. But a whole lot of people do. So I'm going to be me. That's me. I'm doing me. Um, but make a list of all the things that Jesus did do. Um, get to know him a little bit through these chapters of 14 through 16 of Abinadi's teaching. Um, it's like an ancient conference talk, if you will. Make a list of all the things that Jesus did do for us, because it's just really, really good. I've got mine, but you make yours, and if you find something that stands out, drop it in the comments. We want to hear them, because let's share these, right? Um, okay, so that goes on. He talks around there, and in 10 to 11, he talks about that he had no children, but that someone, and there's good people there, they'll carry on his legacy, and that's what we do today as well. 
we're part of that whole big family that carries on that legacy. I myself don't have any children, but I've certainly taught primary children, and it's coming up to Mother's Day, which is a hard one for me, but I think of all the children that have been in my life that I've helped and known and loved, and they will carry on the legacy. The people that I've been able to teach will take the things I've taught and pass them on. I know that's certainly true about my institute students. I see that. I see that in missionaries that go out and they say, hey, we taught this, and I'm like, you do realize I taught you that. But, you know, Christ taught me that. I taught them that. And then now they're teaching it. Um, and I don't need, and I, I don't just say that to them. I'm thinking that and I'm just like, oh, that little moment of, I remember teaching you that in primary. I remember teaching you that in young women's and now you're teaching that. I was inspired to teach you that from Christ. And now you're inspired to teach that. It's like, it's something special. So we don't actually need to have physical children to pass these things on. It's in all the people we interact with, which is why we have a ward family, right? We interact with them, or a branch family, or whatever you got going on, neighborhood family. Teach them the good stuff. It will make a difference. Again, that ripple effect and that influence you have is far beyond what you could ever think. It's huge. Um, and then he actually does give that answer to what the priest asked them about um, this is in 15, um, they're talking about how beautiful are the, uh, upon the mountains were the feet of those that follow Christ. And, and there, it's just a beautiful chapter of Isaiah that I just really, really love. Um, it, it's just such a beautiful way to describe disciples of Christ and those that walk with Christ and the blessings that come to them. And um, I go to that a lot because I'm like, you know, that's it's a really lovely, lovely, like almost poetic description of them. Um and he talks in 28 and 29 about um, how these things are going to like be published by the watchman. shall lift their voice. They're going to watch. They're going to go to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. And we are seeing that now, aren't we? Um, and then a 30, break forth into joy, sing together, ye waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord hath comforted his people. He hath redeemed Jerusalem. And our job is to bring joy. President Nelson told us that. That's what we're to do. We're to break forth into joy. Bring joy. Tell them about Jesus. Break forth. Go for it. He's comforted. He's going to redeem. Like, let's go and do it. So what are some of the phrases that really stand out to you? I've given you some of mine. Like, um, how about what words deepen your love and appreciation and gratitude for him as well? So I like what Jesus did um, in 15 and what he is. So 15, 18 through 20, I particularly like. I read you that. Uh, 28 to 31, which I just gave you a piece of. And I also like 16, 14 to 15. So 16, he talks about redemption mostly and how that the atonement's actually going to work. And then in 14 to 15, he says, Therefore, if you teach the law of Moses, also teach that it is a shadow of those things which are to come. Teach them that redemption cometh through Christ the Lord, who is the eternal Father. So he's saying, like, if you're going to go teach that law of Moses, which is still currently the prevailing law at the time, whether they're in Jerusalem or not, that is the scriptural law at the time. Jesus is going to come and change that. Um, it's a shadow of those things which are to come, which is Christ and his gospel and the and the expanding, expanding greatness of it. And don't we have so much more of that now? Uh, we have so much more ability and um, trust given to us, as I was saying before as well, that we're just able to do so much more. Um, and the way we live. So what are these phrases? What are the things in here that expand your love for him and his knowledge and your knowledge about him and your, deepens your gratitude? Those are some of mine. What's yours? Those are some of the things written on my heart. What's written on yours? Let us know. All right, hang around. We're going to finish off with Mosiah 17. I'll see you there.